I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. All right, so we're going to talk about disinformation or the art of spreading disinformation. And how that starts is you take a person who is already in your group and you tell that person to pretty much act or pose as the opposition group. And when you do that, what you do is you train this person in how to talk, how to act, and how to weed out or find um, resistance members to the opposition. And one way you do that is that you create a forum, and that forum is usually through media, and um, they use usually radio, sometimes television, but usually radio because it's safer, and it's personal, and it's more one-on-one, -on -one. and since it's mostly unseen, it's hard to tell um, if the guy's really legit and um, so you can't really tell that through the radio station so the only way you can tell that is through the Bible and the Bible has to be your source of truth because if it's not then anybody can fool you if you don't have a source of truth in your life and if it's not the truth like if you don't have a way to discern then you're gonna get fooled every single time some of these people could be telling the truth some of these people could be telling you lies Disinformation artists tell you both, and they do it on purpose, because they give you a little truth to make you trusting, so like a flock, you go under their wing, but they don't tell you the full truth so that it protects them from you finding out something about them. So a guy like Art Bell, a guy like Alex Jones, a guy like Leon Honor, a guy like David Icke, those are all disinformation artists, and how you tell that is simply through the word. David Icke says that he's a white magician. That's his religion, a white magician. He does not believe in Jesus Christ. He believes that Jesus is a created alien. He's told you some truth because in his occult, he knows about that stuff. But when it comes to his religion and his religious beliefs, those are the deceptions that he's taught himself. Those are deceptions that were taught to him. And that's the lie that he tries to flood your brain with. How can this man promise you a way to fight your enemy and then offer no way out of that solution. He pretty much tells you that the world is doomed and that sooner or later you have got to serve alien beings. That's a lie. He leaves out the part about Jesus Christ. He leaves out a part about the thousands of hosts of angels on the side of good. He leaves out the part about the created universe. He leaves out the part about Christian science. He leaves out a whole lot of stuff. And he leaves out the real teachings, the core of Jesus Christ's teachings. If you learn the core of it, you would understand that that's not oppression, that's not alien, and that's not unnatural. That's the beginning and the power that holds the universe together. In fact, that's the very life thing that gave all those false prophets life. So you need to understand just how bad their deception is. So, to discern is to use the Bible to understand the truth. White magician comes from witchcraft. That comes from the worship of paganism. That comes from the occult. So that's it's satanic. Leon Honor believes also in alien beings. He does not believe in Jesus Christ. Art Bell says he believes in Jesus Christ and he's against the Illuminati. Yet it's been shown that the Illuminati bank, as we know as a Federal Reserve, that particular bank is what funded his radio station and also the radio station of Alex Jones. He also was against using Illuminati symbols and he taught us about the One-Eye Pyramid, but yet the One-Eye Pyramid appears on his logo and on his advertisement of his radio show. And we all know that when a person puts a symbol above their name, they're showing you who they serve. So Al Bell is suitably telling you, I am Illuminati. But you don't catch that because he didn't tell you this other information about those type of symbols. Now, there's been a few people on a show who's actually risked their lives because they thought Art Bell was good. Well, Art Bell betrayed their position and their location, and now a lot of those people are dead. And the hoax that he did have on his show, those were pretty obvious. But you can tell that there were some things that went on there that 
That was pretty real. And those people are not alive anymore. Thank you, Art Bell. Thank you so much for that. So, to understand, disinformation artists are designed to weed out real people who are trying to really do the Word of God. They're trying to really work for spreading information to you to help you rise above the slavery that's all around you. And I'm not talking about chains, cops, gangs, bad parents. I'm talking about your spiritual soul. I'm talking about what you personally believe in and how that's made to hold you back. How can lust, violence, idolatry, or any of these people that you look up to, when have they ever really helped you in your whole life? If you can't pay the rent one day, do you think they're going to come in and save you? And let's, you can add up all the money that you've given to them. You think they would adjust it that way? They'll watch you die. Now, do you think Jesus would do that? Think about it. Use your own discernment and think about it. When has the Bible ever taught you that those ways will lead you to salvation? When the Bible talked bad about it, you may have been offensive, but look at your life and look at what's going on all around you. Is that positive? The Bible says it's negative. So now look at yourself. Why are you so depressed? Why are you so angry? Why are you so mad all the time? Why can't you be somebody's friend? If your way was the better way, why are so many people dying and suffering? The Bible had the simple solution, do unto others as you would want done unto you. What's so wrong with that? Think about it. All right, so we're going to be talking about uh, disinformation and um, this is our second video about this information, so we kind of are going to elaborate a little bit on what we talked about and expose some things that you probably um, are not prepared for or, or things that um, may question what you've come to know. So um, one thing you got to understand is the main facts of disinformation. A disinformation is an artist into which a disinformation artist is somebody acting and somebody pretending to be something that they're not. And usually these are classified in the Bible as false prophets or false teachers. Their job is to learn some truth, but learn enough truth to get your attention. Once they have your attention, they then fill your head with a lot of truth and a lot of lies. The lies are meant to fuel whatever doctrine that they've created in their minds. And so, um, for instance, there's a lot of disinformation artists out there. And so what we do is that we have a serious, serious truth that's going on in this world. We have world leaders that worship Satan. We have uh, a presence of an alien presence in the earth and in the solar system. Um, we have beings existing on this planet that we thought were myth but have a reality to them. Um, we have people who are actually demon possessed and are part of occults that are so secret that they practice um, certain sorcery arts where they're able to do things that would seem magical or even affect the mind and soul in such a way that their doctrine and their explanation to how they amass power, fame, influence, and all these things would seem that they have the answer. But they too are deceived. They're just deceived on a higher level than you are. And so um, that is the artistic form of disinformation. It's to take the truth and to doctrine it up. It's to uh, take something that already has clothing and put certain ornaments on it. And so um, that is the, the essence of it. And so um, people who talk about the Illuminati or people who talk about Jesus Christ, people who, who, talk, who, who bring this information to you, you're, you're looking at a world where there's a secret battle going on and it's a battle over the truth because you're in a world full of lies so when you're in a world full of lies the most powerful weapon you can have is the truth because that's the weapon that they're trying to take from you that's what they're trying to take away from you and they spend a lot of time doing that by spreading disinformation disinformation is meant to confuse you from the truth it's meant to draw you away it's meant to question your faith 
or question what you've come to learn so that they can hit you with something else that you didn't see coming and they can question what you what you foreknew. Sometimes we need to be corrected because maybe we get something wrong but that doesn't mean that the truth is not within you or that you don't know the truth. So we need to get back track on, on certain things here. One thing that's a fact is that Satan hates the Bible. And one thing that's a fact is that Satan offered Jesus Christ the kingdoms of the world. Satan cannot offer Jesus Christ the kingdoms of the world unless he owned them in some way, unless he had a certain control over those kingdoms to such a high degree that he could tell those kingdoms what to do. It was back then, and it was before Christ's uh, coming to the earth, and it's, it's very present in our time. Uh, Babylon is the, is the type of nation you're living in now. It's simply a spiritual description to describe the kind of world you would be living in. That is the world you're living in now. So if Satan runs the kingdoms of all the world, then and Satan hates the Bible, and Satan is a liar and a deceiver, so this tells you that the Bible stands out from the rest of the world. The Bible, once properly understood, and not understood but disinformation artists who also preach the Bible, unfortunately, which, which causes people to get even more confused. To solve that situation, read the Bible for yourselves. Or find somebody who's grounded in reading the Bible for themselves or is more grounded in the truth. Do not find somebody who has a job to minister, who's getting paid to do that. Do not find somebody that's part of an institution that's so ancient and grounded in controversy, child molestation, things like that, and don't even believe in marrying their own counterpart women to teach you about the Bible, because obviously there are things that they don't know about the Bible that they're not applying to themselves. And I speak on institutions similar to Catholicism. And um, so in order to solve this problem, do not rely on the Internet to understand the Bible. Do not rely on somebody else's interpretation. You have to become baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. You have to read the Bible for yourselves. You have to have an open relationship with Jesus Christ. And then you've been taught to believe in this world, well, Jesus Christ is just one way to salvation. That's not true. He's the only way to salvation. These people wouldn't spend so much time trying to put that knowledge away from your mind if it wasn't true. They want you to follow them, and they'll tell you anything to get you to follow them. So you got to keep in mind is that in this world, it's a hustler's world, and a hustler wants something in the end of it. So always keep that in mind, that going to churches and giving them your money ain't getting you to heaven. Going to Buddha and looking for seven ways into an entrance is also not getting you to heaven either. Going to New Age gurus who want nothing but your brain and humming all day to evil spirits is not going to get you to heaven either. And being a white magician and telling people about the hierarchy but yet denying them the proper knowledge of where true demon possession comes from is not going to get you into heaven. The only way to heaven is Christ. Believe me, every other way has been tried. Every other way has failed. And the reason why it's failed, and if you don't think so, the only way I can convince you is that you have to research this for yourself, and you have to do it with an open mind and a true heart. Find out the end results of everybody else who came with a different doctrine other than Jesus Christ and told you about another way to heaven. Find out the end results of their spiritual lives, what really happened to them, what kind of mental state that they were in. You, you look at all these leaders from the past, find out what kind of people were they. Find out who they really were. You know, find out who your forefathers, the American forefathers really were. Find out what they really believed in. Find out what Scientologists really believe in. Um, find out what New Age gurus really believe in. Find out what high training Buddhist monks and Kambalists really believe in. Find out what white magicians and witchcraft is really all about. Find out what Satanism is really all about. Find out the fact that the people have to die, people have to suffer, that energy has to be fueled through suffering in order to appease their gods. Find out the reality of these religions. Find out the true core and the true heart of them. Find out that as you go through the shifting of all the deceivers, find out what the main core of the leaders think. Find out what they really believe. Find the truth. Look beneath the surface. Look beneath it. Don't take things for face value. Look beneath the surface and search the answer for yourselves. Utilize the Holy Spirit in what I'm telling you. The world is messed up. The world is completely out of control. And 
only thing that in the Bible that teaches to resolve this problem is to do unto others as you would want done unto yourself. Think about it. What is so wrong with that? Why is that bad? Why have you been taught that that kind of thinking is weakness? What's weakness about that? Don't you think it takes more strength to share and utilize resources? Isn't it easy to be selfish? Isn't it easy to be conceited? Isn't it easy to think that you know everything so that that resolves everything else that you could do for somebody? Think about the kind of world you're living in. Think about the selfishness of it, how vain it is that you have to lie and be something that you're not. Think about who you admire. Think about the artists and why you have to emulate them just to get along in this world. Think about where your knowledge comes from. Be honest with yourself too. Don't be a hypocrite. Be honest with yourself. Recognize that this information had something to do with that. Recognize that television had a lot in influencing you. Recognize that politicians also had a lot to influence you. Recognize that your whole entire mental makeup, when you get down to the brass task of your intelligence, has media written all over it. You gotta really look at the source of where your information comes from. Who gave them that information? How do they assess it? How do they come to these conclusions? Why are certain things I'm calling facts are being shown not to be facts? And the more and more we talk about this, the further and further away we drift away from the true teaching of Jesus Christ. People are calling Christ an alien or a womanizer or some other thing, but nothing in the Bible and nothing in our true spirit and true history and in an overall common sense could ever verify or justify that kind of opinion. Jesus Christ is remembered 2,000 years later for all the things that the Bible testifies about through eyewitnesses who testify to the same things before the Bible was even written. You got to look very beneath the surface about certain things. Why is this such a threat to people? Why are they so afraid of it? Why do leaders do everything but not follow the Bible, but yet always make it clear that they're Christians? How can a Christian engage in war? How can a Christian not help the poor? How can a Christian overlook the fact that people are starving and dying and, and suffering and are not given the same fair shakes as other groups are? How could true Christians seem to overlook that? Well, they're not stupid, and they're not overlooking that. That's because those are the type of Christians they are. And the Bible tells us that's not true Christianity. And so we got to recognize what the 666 is all about. The 666 is all about those who think they're Christians but actually follow the world. It's a spiritual mark. It's a spiritual mark that will one day become a real government mark because people are being prepped and trained for it. Keep in mind what the Antichrist is all about or what anti-Christianity is all about. You know, these people don't think it's evil. These people think it's good. They think it's the new type of Christianity. You know, they think that being pagan is different from what it was before. It's not. It's the same idolatry. It's the same paganism. You're either going to live for the idols of the world or you're going to, you know, live for Jesus Christ. You're either going to suffer and die for the idols or you're going to suffer and die in the earth as somebody standing for Jesus Christ and receive your ultimate peace, reward, and riches in the end and an eternal life at that. People tend to think that when you die, it's all over. You're in the grave, goodbye. How do you think like that when there's ghosts and spirits all around you? You know, when you experience things in your life that science can't even explain and tells you it's not real, but yet here you are dealing with it. Even occultists know that there's life after death. So keep that in mind. You know, why are they so afraid of the one who runs that world? Why do they need to always identify with a rebel and a traitor? You know, keep that in mind. You know what I mean? And if you don't think that's the case, if you think it's all good and roses, then why is it that human beings are at each other's throats all the time? Why do we have all this racism and sexism and violence and greeds and haves and have-nots and rich and poor and dividing lines and borders and boundaries and separations? Why do you think we have all that? The Bible doesn't support any of that stuff. The Bible tells us that we cling to deceit. So, therefore, we've been deceived about how we live with each other, how we walk with each other. The Bible says that the human heart has depravity and sin, so how can anybody call themselves good? How can you see this condition and see good in it when the Bible doesn't see it in there? And the Bible says you can solve every one of those problems that I just mentioned by doing unto others as you would want done unto yourself. Why is that so hard for people to do? You know, it's because they're listening to another source. And that source is telling them to be at each other's throats, but I'm just going to take care of you and your little group. Keep in mind how evil that is, that these leaders will actually accept the fate of millions of people dying around them as long as they're okay. 
you need to keep that in mind that as you follow this world and are a citizen and a patriot to this world they really truly don't care about you man and let's put Jesus Christ aside that's the absolute fact they really truly don't care about you think about it for a minute just think about it 